I had to learn the hard way. My first couple of sessions in training, I got I got booted in the air. I didn't expect that. At that time, it was just literally playing for fun. My biggest achievement for me. round of applause for Alex. I think claps are important. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, of course, is Everton midfielder and Nigerian international. Started at Arsenal right when you were at primary school, six years old, and then you were officially signed when you were nine years old. You've been at Arsenal for a long, long time, made your debut in 2015. Hope I've got this all right. And we're part of the FA Cup winning squad in 2017. And then in 2019, you signed for Everton, which is where you're at at the moment. And I know you recently scored. <laughs> Alex, to start with, I want to take you back. Um, I mentioned that you started with Arsenal so young, which we often find with um, players. How how did it first start? Like, how did you did you get scouted? Did you realise you're an amazing footballer? No, I didn't really realise at the age of six. I was just playing for my local team at the time, which was um, in Newham called Rip Away. I was playing there with like friends and I was always okay. I was good at football from a young age, but there was a scout that scouted me, Sean O'Connor, into the Arsenal system. So me and another boy called Tuba, we went into, we got the invitation to go to Arsenal and ever since then it's been history. Did you realise, did you kind of realise that you wanted to be a professional footballer? And, you know, cause you were so young, you were still obviously going to school where, you know, people were kind of living what you'd say like a normal life compared to you, you were training like to such a high level. Obviously at the age of six, you're not really thinking about where you're going to end up. At the age of six, you just more or less play for fun. And I've always loved football. So I've always been lucky that I've had the opportunity to go to like my local park or be invited to play with different teams. At that time, it was just literally playing for fun so I can express myself. Alex, I know, I know in your career and I know, especially I think when when football is teenagers, there's that, are you going to make it, right? Yeah. Or you're, not, or you're not. And I think it's only a small, incredible percentage that do. How did you get over the times where, you know, they were low or you were told that you weren't good enough? Um, of course, I had a lot of like bumpy roads to get to where I am. Um, I, I remember a specific age when I was like 14, 13, 14. And I got questioned whether I'm going to be good enough because at that age, I was... I was quite small, I wasn't really physical, I wasn't as big as I have right now. And I always had that question, is he gonna develop? Is he gonna grow up to be able to fit in physically and like with his own age mates? So it was always hard for me back then, but I've always had a good team around me. Even to this day, I still have that good team. My family, my friends, they've always been supportive. So if, I, if I'm struggling on the pitch and mentally off the pitch, I'll be able to cope because I've got that support around me. What stops you from going, oh no, I'm not doing this, like when you were younger? When I was younger, my love for football, because I've always wanted to go back on the pitch, whether it's on the pitch and training or on match days to try and prove the people that say, oh, he's not good enough. I always wanted to prove them wrong and say, I have the ability to compete. That motivation and hunger has always been there. And what about when you joined Everton? What was that like? Because you'd spent so long at one club and also you're from, you know, you, you're brought up in London and then you've moved up to Liverpool or near about Liverpool, I can imagine, and gone to a completely different team. The decision was never easy. I mean, it was a hard decision for me to leave my boyhood club. And it was obviously the transition was always going to be hard, but I would like to give thanks to Everton because they've made the, that transition very easy. They've welcomed me with open arms, but the decision was always hard because Arsenal was almost like my home. Like, mm. I'm going to train and I feel comfortable. But for me to go into a new environment, everyone's speaking like a scouser, more, more or less. So I'm having to adapt to that, but Everton have made it easy for me. So the transition wasn't too hard. And I'm actually enjoying my time here to be fair. Alex, what, what would you say drives you? I know you said like your love for football, but what drives you every day to train in and out like you do and to be the best? Nowadays, <laughs> see where I've come from, like, from a young age where I was just that little kid to the park. I still have that enjoyment like to go on the pitch and express myself. I'm the sort of guy that likes to entertain, to like try and get goals, play forward. So whenever I'm on the pitch, I feel like I'm in a world of my own. I get to enjoy it. Then the joy it brings like for my family, my friends, especially my family, because there was a lot of sacrifices along the way for, for me to get to where I am from 
my dad working two jobs, which I only found out recently, he never told me. But as a kid, I would never know that my mum working hard for me to just get football boots. And even my sister, like, my sister would turn up to games cold. She didn't want to be there, but she'll be there. So just like little things like that have got me to where I am today. And I feel like it's not just me playing, it's that like my family are playing and my friends are playing. So I have to make sure that everyone's proud and I always give my best for them. What was it like when you found out your dad worked two jobs then to help support where you are now? I was thinking, how? Oh, I, never, I never knew, because I knew about one job, and I never knew about the second. So I was, I was kind of rattled when they told me that you used to work two jobs. I was thinking, oh, I never knew you had time for a second job. And then take me to football as well. So, no, nah, just little things like that make me like, appreciate where I've got to even more. So, as much as I can, I try to take care of them and make sure they're as happy as me when I'm on the pitch. I know when you were younger, when you first got your pair of football boots, you've said this, so it better be right, <laughs> that you um, you took them to bed with you. Yeah, no, that's right. What what was that like? How much did they mean to you? I remember I received, I can't remember what occasion it was, but as soon as I got them, I even kept the box. I used the box on the pillow, like the football boots box that it comes with. And I was literally sleeping on it as a pillow. And I didn't let go. I remember I was too excited. I just wanted to go to the park and try them. I think I even wore them in the house, wearing football boots in the house. But yeah, no, the joy that it brought me. And, was, and to to realise how much like my parents worked for me to get those boots now, I'm forever grateful. You know, footballers, I think they're under so much pressure, especially with like social media. I think like you're only as good as you want the game and mm -hmm. if you win, then everybody puts you on a pedestal and then if you wrong when everybody like goes for you how do you deal with that when i first came on into the scene i was doing pretty well so like you always go to twitter to instagram to see what everyone's saying and obviously as a young boy going into the scene you get excited and you're just like oh yeah i'm doing well and the fans are believing me but there's obviously rough patches where people even to this day like even if you, even if you play well there's always going to be someone saying oh you could have done this and like, you always improve your game at the end of the day but the older i get the more i realize that everyone's entitled to an opinion and this is what it is the only person that can really judge how you play this for my like, i only judge myself so like I, of course i listen to what outsiders have to say like, especially like, my coaching staff or if my dad said i could have done this better always take it on board but I never be too harsh on myself because there's always another opportunity to run the corner. So I always feel like even if I have a bad game, the opportunity is around the corner so I can try and prove others wrong. So that's how I look at it. And you're also like, what you were saying is interesting because you're listening, you back yourself, but you're listening to people that know you, but not people that don't. Yeah. Know who you are. Um, what would you say your biggest achievement is today? My biggest achievement for me I've always said this is when I played against um, Zambia for my national team and my parents were there in the stadium and they watched me score the goal that sent my country to the World Cup. That's that's for me the biggest moment because not only that I was able to get my nation through, but my parents were there supporting and I could see them. So when I scored, I literally celebrated with them. Carlo. And there it is. It won't be the substitute with the opening goal on 73 minutes and quite possibly it's the strike that sends Nigeria through to... Game changer! Yes, of course! The team continues, our team's going yes. to go up We're going together! We're going now! Russia. Yeah, so what were you telling your fans? Oh, I'm so happy that I can't even say anything. <laughs> I'm too happy. Oh, oh, we are yeah. off to Russia. What are you saying? <laughs> hey guys, we're off to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Say. Was it a hard decision like, whether to represent Nigeria or to represent England? I know you played for England. Right? No. Yeah, of course it was hard because I've grown up in England my whole life. I've been here my whole life, so and I played for England and the hospitality, the treatment I got given by England, I'm always, I'm, like I say, I'm grateful because they gave me the opportunity to learn my trade and I've had some good memories of scoring a couple goals for England as well, so I had some good fun memories of them, but the decisions, it was always going to be hard, but I, I feel like I've grown up in the Nigerian culture, I even had the opportunity to go and see what it's like playing for my national team before I made that decision, so I felt more... I felt more at home playing for Nigeria. I have nothing against England, like I always have that respect for England, but I felt more at home playing for my for Nigeria. I'll let you are, just as long as you're <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs>
where it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Alex, I'm going to open it to, to the group in a second. But my final question is, what's, well, maybe my final question. Um, <laughs> Loads. What is the most important bit of advice you've been given that you kind of take with you? Has there been any? Is it from like family or managers you've had along the way? Um, I would say it's from my family and my uncle. I'm lucky enough I had an uncle that played football as well. So he's always told me, he always said to me, my, and my family said to me, like, express yourself with football. Like, it's, it's your source of entertainment. It's how you, especially for me, that's how I enjoy my life. I always play football anywhere I can. and. They've always told me at a young age, play football with a smile on your face and express yourself and don't be shy to do so. so that's that's literally the advice I'd be telling anyone if they love the sport, just express yourself with football. When you switched from Arsenal to Everton, did you find the, the training methods and the sort of culture and perspective to football was really different between the two teams? When I first you yeah. For example, like Arsenal, I grew up in like Arsenal was always like you always have the ball, always play football, and like to enjoy the ball and have like basic possession team. Well with Scousers playing for Everton, I realised that we don't have the ball as much but when we first when I first we didn't have the ball as much. Demanded a lot more like work rate and running off the ball and a lot of tackling and I had to learn the hard way. My first couple of sessions in training I got I got booted in the air. I didn't expect that. What's like the hardest part about being an elite footballer? The hardest part right now is not being able to see my family as regular. For example, when I played against um, Wolves, the first thing I'm thinking about when I scored is I want to say, see how my family are and celebrate with them. So when I don't have that opportunity to do so, it kind of throws me off a bit. But apart, I think that's the only thing that really frustrates me because I love being with my family. I love spending time with them and when I'm not with them, I'm like, oh, I wish I could beat them, but that's that's what comes with football, especially now I've moved the way up, up north. How did you find it when you was in training and all your friends were out having fun? Because I'm in uni, so all my friends go partying and stuff, and then I'm like, I can't, I got dance training. When I was at Arsenal and everyone was at like my age, it was at uni. Footballers, we have a lot of spare time, you know, you'd be surprised, we actually have a lot of spare time. So if I train, I train in the morning, I'll be done about like two. Two, three, and where Arsenal was based in, like Hertfordshire, I had some of my friends in Hertfordshire Uni, so I used to go and visit them. Not really party, just literally go and visit them in their accommodation, have a little vibe. We play table tennis, but I wouldn't stay too long so they don't get distracted from their work or what they're doing. So, yeah, no, footballers, you have a lot of spare time. In our current situation, uh, what is something you would like give uh, advice you give uh, someone, to, like stay motivated to pay, continue playing? I don't know the like circumstances for everyone because for me growing up at a young age, I always had the opportunity to go to my local park, to my local cage, to my local fiver side and play with my friends. So obviously the advice is for everyone to stay at home and avoid that. So it will be difficult for me to get advice now. Like some people don't have the opportunity to go to like the local park and I don't have a garden, so I, I, I don't know. It's it's a hard one. It's a hard one to say because I don't know what the situation is like for everyone. But, um, yeah, if you want something so bad, like I'm sure you'll find a way to improve yourself and work hard. There's even like silly me. I used to go on YouTube and try to like learn skills. I'll be watching that like, Ronaldinho or my uncle's skills on YouTube. Just little things like that. Then I'll try to practice in my part. So. I don't know what people would like say for dancing. If you want to learn something, learn a technique to dancing. You just go on YouTube and try executing in your house or something. Say so your uncle JJ Kocha, one of the best, I guess, skilled artists to play football. I guess, what is the best skill he's ever taught you that you? Um, That's a good question. The sort of guy, like he's he, he creates tricks. Like that, I can't put a name on the trick that he taught me, but. I was lucky enough to go to, when he was at Bolton and Sam Allardyce was the manager, I was able to go to one training session and he taught me like a weird flick. I don't know what it's called, but I've done it once in a game when I was younger. And I was like, oh, I've managed to pull off my uncle's flick. But like, it was weird. There's no name to it. I can't put a name to it, but I'm able to do it. Maybe one day I'll try it in a game, if I can. And Angelotti will get onto me, but I'll try to pull it off for you guys. So what's like a typical day's training for you like? I'll explain today because not everyone trained because we had a match yesterday and I was unavailable. We had a match yesterday and then training today, 
we were in at 12, trained at 12, and then because of COVID, you literally just go in and go out. They don't want anyone spending as much time with each other. So I go into training, get ready for training. We do a few tests to make sure that you're physically ready. That they take, it's weird, they, they take pictures of our legs and it's like on a heat map, it's weird. So we get that done every day. Then go out for training. The manager normally has something to say, but where there was not many people training today, he, like he had a little short speech, making sure everyone's okay. He trained, work hard in training. And then after training, some people like to do extras in the gym, or even before training, like everyone likes to do extras in the gym, whether it's a little stretch or whether it's a little workout in the gym. So you do that. We can't go in the swimming pool. I always like to go in the swimming pool and just stretch and relax. And because I'm lucky enough for the training ground to have a swimming pool, I like to utilize it. But because of the COVID restrictions, we, we can't go in it as much. So do that in and out. As soon as you're done, shower and go home. And they, they give us lunch, to be fair. They give us lunch, like pack lunch to take home. So everyone abuses that. <laughs> they take that and go home. If you're allowed to answer, if it's who is your favorite manager to play under? My favorite manager would have to be Arsene Wenger. Because he was the one that actually gave me the opportunity to showcase my talent, well, obviously breaking into the scene. He's always He was always chatting to me and like telling me how I can improve my game and develop. So I would say Arsene Wenger for me. How old were you when you realised that you wanted to do football in your future professionally? When I left school, so 16, when I had to leave school and not really scrap education because I still had the opportunity to do BTEC sport when I was 16. But when I had to leave school and you have to go into football 24-7, and you're entering a man's world and just seeing a lot of things at the age of 16, I'm like, do I really want to do it? And then I thought, after the first week, I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. I'm comfortable. I really enjoy it. So I would say when I left school, that's when I thought, ah, oh, there's a great opportunity for me to make as a footballer. Let me not waste it. And I gave my all since then. My question was, in terms of the people that help performance, so like the performance analyst, nutritionist, people like that, like who is your... Like, what area is like your best or your favorite? Well, I can tell you my least favorite is definitely my nutrition because I like to eat good food. I like to eat good food. I like, especially my weakness is Vimto. So even now, I'm getting no added sugar <laughs> to my Vimto, which obviously doesn't sort of taste, but it is what it is. But um, so nutrition is definitely not my favorite, but I'm quite strict with what I take. Yeah, analyzing my games, I have someone through my agency who helps me analyze my games and tells me where I can improve. So he'll send me my, after like, for example, my game against Wolves, he'll send me a video or, or something I can watch on Dropbox. So I'll look at it there and I'll see where I can improve, where I could have like passed the ball, where I could position myself. So I like to improve my game. So watching videos back really, like, really excites me.